we're going to uh, pick up where we left off about the vessels. One of the things that we left off on Tuesday is talking about the capillaries and how that really is the um, area where everything is going to happen because it's at this capillary bed that all of the exchange gets to occur. We talked about the three types, continuous, fenestrated, sinusoids, and we left off at this picture right here. When we talk about the capillaries, they are microscopic. It is difficult to know how many are in the body. What we know is that it's the area that any type of exchange of materials gets to occur. Meaning, on the arterial end, we get to have the delivery of, from the blood of nutrients, glucose, electrolytes, um, materials that the cell at that tissue might need. Okay? Also, because cells are doing their job, meaning they're carrying out their cell activities, that means they're doing all of these different chemical reactions. They're needing energy. Their energy is ATP. Production of that is CO2. And then as they make proteins and so forth, they're going to, you know, create nitrogenous waste. There are going to be wastes in the tissues. In the case of the blood that we have in our body, we're going to find that we have roughly that four to six liters at any point in time. That four to six liters, however, is not enough to supply blood to every capillary bed in the body. So the ones that can be shut down, that's what the body will do. And it basically will reroute the blood flow. So at the capillary level, we have little sphincters that can be present. If this were a capillary bed in tissues, okay, that blood supply will or can be shut down. If that's the case, as the blood flows through the body and we get to the capillary level, it will simply meet going into my arterioles and it will just pass by way of this met arteriole to a vein and return to the heart. So the blood that was coming through at this point at these tissues didn't drop anything off or pick anything up. For example, as you guys are sitting here right now, your calf muscles are not busy. So a lot of that blood that could, if like if you were walking, running, doing a physical activity, that blood supply going to those capillary beds, they're just, it's simply just kind of shut down right now. And it's taking it back to the organs of your body. Because the one thing the body wants to do, and no matter what, the body's going to feed the brain. Okay? It wants to feed major viscera. Part of the viscera that it will reroute blood from is our digestive system. Okay? But for the most part, this is what the body wants to do. So, when it comes time to do that physical activity, it now needs to make sure blood flow is going to the skeletal muscles. And for the most part, the area that will get shut down for viscera is going to be the digestive system. So, the goal is to have this blood flow begin to make its way to the tissues. At the tissues, for those capillaries, B 
Because the capillaries are microscopic, okay? So once again, let's use our little representation of a tissue. And in this tissue, having cells, okay, remember, they contain extracellular fluid. And then we're going to end up having our little capillary bed. This capillary bed will have the ability to feed a certain number of cells. So in this same tissue where I'm going to find more cells, okay, there's going to be other capillary beds present. Does that make sense? Because they are microscopic, we have no idea the number of them that we actually have. So, we know that what's happening, that capillary bed feeds a certain amount. And another capillary bed, another capillary bed, capillary, capillary, bed, 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 bed. Okay? So now, if we have that arterial end, and then the venous end meets at the capillary bed, because that's what happens. The arteries meet the veins at the level of the capillary bed. <clears throat> Our veins are very interesting. Do you remember on Tuesday how we talked about the majority of our blood is in our veins? Okay? Because They are under very little pressure, all right, and they are dependent on skeletal muscle to move that blood back to the heart. So our veins are called capacitants. Do you remember what the arteries were called? resistance. All right. So now these are capacitance, capacity. Their capacity to expand and accommodate a larger volume of blood is greater. They're not pretty much, they're not under pressure. So their flow is not pulsatile. Their flow is pretty steady. The flow, except from the area, from the heart up, okay, has to work against gravity. That's a lot when you think about the gravity that keeps us down. So, <clears throat> Under the veins, there's five types. We're going to go from the area where my arteries meet the veins in the capillaries. At that level of the capillary, we're going to find we've got our post-capillary vein. We're going to see venules, post-capillary. So we're starting at the smallest level and working our way back to the heart. So the smallest is post-capillary. They're getting the blood <clears throat> from the capillaries. They're very porous. Once again, one cell layer thick. Just like at that arterial end of the capillaries. We are looking at vessels that are one cell layer thick. That's it. Because they have to be able to exchange fluid, exchange materials, just like the arterial end. 
one of the things about the exchange at the level of the capillaries, we have to remember that we also have to deal with movement of water. We're not just talking about nutrients, okay? The other product that we have to deal with in the blood as well as in the tissues themselves is movement of water. We have to take care of that at this level of the capillaries. Something else that we can have move, leukocytes. Remember, under the leukocytes, there are white blood cells that get to move into those tissues, wander around, pick up anything that might be foreign, and get rid of it, okay? In the muscular veins, they're receiving from the post-capillary, medium are receiving from the muscular. Now, we begin to see a little bit more of the three layers, okay? So, the medium are gonna have the endothelium, the simple squamous epithelium, all right? They have a basement membrane, they have loose connective tissue to help them stay anchored. And sometimes they will have elastic material. At this point, we now see valves. Go all the way back to the tidal slide. And on the tidal slide, on the side with the vein, it shows little flaps. Does everybody see them on the veins? Those are the valves. Preventing backflow. We have to prevent backflow. We have to ensure that since blood in all the system, the blood needs to move in one direction. Because veins are not under pressure and are not pulsatile, we still need the blood to move in one direction, back to the heart. <coughs> Valves are going to do that. So the veins in your lower body coming back to the heart. What's going to happen as you follow their pathway and you make it to medium, as the medium travel, basically you'll see every so many sections, you'll see those valves turn, be present. Because based upon gravity, because we've got to push the blood against gravity, when you get up and walk, move, whatever the case might be, and your skeletal muscles push against a valve, they'll push, blood will move up, hopefully that valve will close, and it doesn't move back down. Does that make sense? So as you move, you're continuously pushing the blood back to the heart and the valves ensure one-way blood flow. Lovely varicose veins are the result of those valves breaking down. Gotta love them. So, the next thing is going to be a venous sinus. Their walls are thin, the lumen. The lumen is referring to how in a vessel you've got an empty space. But this is actually the area that the blood is moving. Okay? So if we think of this tube 